Welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars. We've got Lars Mullen here. Now, Lars is a journalist, a freelance photographer, um, plays guitars, uh, is a collector. Um, well, loads of stuff. What else have you done? Play guitar is the most important thing. Of course, play guitar. Now, all these guitars here today are your guitars, but let's start with this one I've got in my hand. Yeah, we bought a few along. There's um, quite a few in my house. Far too many, I'm told. Yeah. Well, actually, they're not kept in my house. I have um, a little... Um, a separate room. No, no. Yeah. One, one day a week, one day a month, I have a boys' day out, and I go to a lock-up where they're kept, and there's an amp played very loud, and it just airs the cobwebs. But this one here, uh, 63 Strat, that's probably... Yes, it is. It's the first... Well, look at it now, but it was at the time, it was the most decent guitar I had. Well, this is obviously... Worn. <laughs> Very worn. It looks uh, fantastic. I got it? it in 71 when there was no such thing as vintage. Anything vintage was an old chair you might find in an antique shop, wasn't there? It was clean when I got it. It needed, uh, it needed a refresh. It's refret. not now. And you Wherever even... you're storing it, it's, just, it's not really uh, working. No, well, right? it's, it's in the lock up and there's a lot of dust in it, but I just can't bring myself to clean it. I don't know. I retired it about 10 years no, ago. It looks fantastic. I love the, the dirt. Well, let's get it plugged in and see how it sounds. So it sounds like you've got the best job in the world. Can you tell us some more about your work in the music industry? Best job in the world. I do like what I do, else I wouldn't do it for the pennies that they pay me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Nothing changes. The music business is different to anything else. I'm going to get a T-shirt. Sorry I didn't call back. I'm, it's the music business. Um, no, um, I interview lots of artists and I see lots of guitars in magazines and I write about them. Interviewing people is, and the research you have to do as well, I really do like doing that. And as I'm freelance, I can write whoever I want to. Um, and I get to go to the NAMM shows in Nashville and California. Wonderful. I've always wanted to go. And all those always. places. It's, it's good fun, isn't it? And the, like Nashville is more flat picking, acoustic, country rock, where the Nashville, the, sorry, the California NAMM, that's, mm. that's full on rock. Rock. I look like I work in a bank there. Yeah. I've got the shortest hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's full on. It's good. So your time at the NAMM show, you must see lots of interesting instruments, which I guess brings us on to here. Uh, we've got the Music Vox, Space Ranger, bass and guitar. Can you tell us some more about these instruments? Yes. I, I like, I've always had a bent for something a little bit unusual, having lots of strats, Les Pauls and stuff. Great. But um, I just like something outrageous. And I met this guy who makes these. Uh, that's the six-string Space Ranger in Taxi Cab Yellow. I've put the dice on the, um, on the, on the things a little bit, and this is the bass. But um, I was at a NAMM show, I think it must have been uh, mid-90s, something like that, quite a while ago. Guitars as far as you can see. And I could see these cashew nut hockey stick headstocks sticking up because he had them. Oh, I mean, what on earth is that? <laughs> Les Paul sat by the fire with all sorts of, had a little meltdown. But bless him, he's gone on, he's still pumping them out and using like 50s Dan Deere adverts and rockets and stuff. But the latest ones have got horns right up here and pointy horns up here. And there's a lot of credible artists playing them now. So 
So you're also a musician uh, as well, like you play in bands? Yes, yes, yes. Since knee high to whatever, my first oh, Bill Shaw haircut, <laughs> 11 year old playing a Spanish guitar in the school band, you know, thrumming away, about 50 of us. But then I bought the Hoffner, as I say, and went in the local band um, called Howitzer, the gun Howitzer in Torquay. We, we were the local band that does quite good, and we got on the um, support act for the Torquay Town we play there at Clapton, Free, Roy Gallagher. Oh, so many of them. I was awesome. 19, I was. And I was going in to work the next day and they said, who'd you play with last night? Eric Clapton. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a bit tough. But um, later on, for about, I think it was about nine years, I was um, professional in a status quo tribute band when tribute bands were rocking. Yeah. That was hard, that was hard, five, six nights a week. And anybody tells me it's easy three chords, I start getting angry. You know? <laughs> It's, it's full on. I, I interviewed the guys in Quo and they said the only way to play that stuff is 100%. Well, that's Lars Mullen. As you can see, he's a bit of a character and a bit of a legend. Good news in Gareth, because Lars is going to be joining us in the autumn for our new series of programmes. Barry's back in the studio. And he's got a very special guitar for us. Let's take a look at a video we recorded here last year. What you got for us, Barry? Well, it's a 1959 Hofner Club 40, oh. a German, German guitar. Again, like so many guitars, spruce top, German maple, back and sides, single pickup, and a nice original instrument of its day, you know. Um, but is this actually a rare guitar? It's not that rare, is it? In itself, no. Uh, it, they're getting rare. The Club 40 is probably the most desirable because of its Lennon McCartney Beatles association. Mm. Um, but not a particularly rare guitar. Okay, but um, so how much would this, one of these instruments cost then? In its all original condition, playable, like most guitars have to be, and if you've got an original case, probably 800, 1200 pounds, something like that. All right, so t we're talking a thousand pounds if you're interested in buying something like this, um, but this instrument is probably worth a little bit more. Why? Well, it does have an association with, we think, with Lennon. It was um, sold in Hamburg in 1960, Christmas 1960, when the Beatles were deported. George was deported for being underage. They all made their way home. John had no money at all and stayed for an extra week, 10 days, not quite sure. And Busking, not quite sure who, money. Yeah. yeah, not quite sure who he played with either. Um, but we think it was either given to him to sell to fund his trip home to Liverpool, or someone sold it and gave him the money. So, we don't know, we're, we're researching it. So wow, so this could actually be a bit of Beatles. He, he could have handled that in that the I'm beer, beer keller in Hamburg. You wow. don't know. And we've got some proof as well, because in the um, guitar cases, mm -hmm. you've got two little plaques yeah. that, uh, well. Well, yeah, one, yeah. one says, basically says that. The other one is it was designated uh, to the Liverpool project uh, in 1980, and the plaque says, uh, in memory of John Winston Lennon, 1940-1980. But I think it was a project that never got off the ground. Okay. So I don't think it happened uh, until maybe four or five years later when the Beatles Museum opened. Well, it, But yeah. uh, we, we don't know. We're trying to research it and find out its life. Well, if anybody history. at home knows, uh, if, you know, if John Lennon's watching, <laughs> Get in touch. Uh, we'd love to find out more about this, wouldn't yes, we? Yes, please. Yeah. On next week's show, we have music from renowned classical guitarist John Gelazzi. And one of the UK's premier luthiers, Rosie Haydenrich from Turnstone Guitars, will be in the studio. I'll be visiting ATB Guitar's brand new guitar lounge. Trust me when I say it's guitar heaven. But before you go, do check out our website, britainsrareguitars.com, for all your vintage and boutique guitar needs. Finally, we'll leave you with some more music from Charlotte Mary. This is a brand new single. She calls it a mess. We think it's all right. We'll see you next time. Leave it, someone's out there, and I won't be cursed for all my life. I remember waking up here, and all the rest of the day just seems a blur.
Falling.